<clears throat> so, in the previous slides, we talked about energy, um, energy and ecosystems. We talked about food chains and food webs. Remember, those types of models show us in an ecosystem how energy moves from one organism to another. So where does ultimately, where does all of the energy come from? Uh, the sun. Do you get your energy from the sun? Well, no, it's just energy, energy, it comes from everywhere, it's everything in every way. Okay, well, where do you get, Logan, right now, where are you getting energy from? Oh. What is it? A blueberry muffin or something? Okay, so Logan's eating some mini blueberry muffins. They contain energy. Yeah, it so tells you on the packet how much energy. That's what the calories are. Protein. Where did that energy come from? Protein. Uh, 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 plants. Sugars. Plants what is? What are muffins made out of? Wheat. 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 Where does wheat come from? A grain. It's a grain, which is a plant. And where did it get its energy? The sun. From the sun. So is Logan getting his energy from the sun? Indirectly. Right, first, wheat plants absorb that energy through photosynthesis. Okay. Then people harvest it, turn it into flour, make muffins, and then Logan's eating them. He's getting energy. So really, if you go back a couple steps, Logan is getting his energy from the sun. Let's say you ate chicken, um, popcorn chicken at lunch today. Yeah. Does that energy come from the sun? Well, I guess because, well, I think so. Well, when you ate popcorn chicken, where did, where, what were you eating? The chicken that ate the, chicken. That ate the corn that came from the plant that the came from the sun. The chicken ate grains, and grains got their energy from the, from the sun. You can trace all energy in all ecosystems really back to the sun. The sun is the ultimate source of energy in ecosystems. We call that solar energy. What types of organisms can use solar energy directly? Plants. Algae. What is the general term we use for those? Uh, no? Dang it, I lost it. It was... Uh, Aisha? I mean... Had it, what? Autotrophs. Autotrophs or producers. They can actually take the sun's energy directly and through photosynthesis transform it into sugars and starches. And then organisms that eat the plants, the producers, they can get energy because they're consuming those producers. And then carnivores get energy by consuming those animals. But really, you could trace all of that energy back to the ecosystem. But every time one organism eats another, they cannot absorb and use all of the energy. Why? Because a lot of that energy... So let's say this. You weigh yourself on a scale. Okay. You eat... A uh, quarter pound cheeseburger. Okay. It's exactly one quarter pound. Okay. You only eat the burger part. Yeah. And then, as soon as you eat it, you step on the scale. What will you weigh? Uh, well, I mean, a half a quarter pound. pound. You a half of a quarter? You ate the whole thing. Oh, uh, yeah. You you weigh it one quarter. Yeah, you weigh one quarter pound bigger because you just consume. But if you come back one day later, <laughs> will you? And you don't eat anything else. Will you still weigh that same amount? No. Nah, probably not. Will it be what? It's gone. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be less. less. What's, well, what happened to that? You shat it out. Well, some of it is, <laughs> let's use the more side You poked it out. You, some of it was indigestible. Lexicoided it. Some of it was indigestible. And so it was removed from your body through the large intestine in the form of feces. Okay, some of it, what else, what happened to other parts of that energy? Um, it went back the body. You used it. You had to breathe. You had to walk around. You had to keep your body running. That was taking some of that energy. Only when one organism eats another, usually only about 10% or so, actually goes into making the organism grow larger. 90% of it is used for all of those activities. It's undigestible. It's used to keep organisms alive. Only 10% makes it the next level.
Let me ask you this question. If we imagine an ecosystem, let's say this savanna ecosystem. That's a grassland. No, oh, there's some trees in the background. Oh, yeah. The savanna ecosystem. Let's say there were some gazelle in there. Okay. And then the lion eats those gazelles. That's good. If you were to think about that situation, if you were to be able to measure all of the mass of the grass in that location, mm -hmm. and all of the mass of all the gazelles living there, and all of the mass of the lions living in that same area, which one would have the greatest mass? I would say the, the, like, the grass, I guess. No? The lion, the lion is you know. If you were to measure up all of the lions versus all the gazelles versus all the grass in a big ecosystem, Oh, let's see. The, the lion. What do you think? So let's. So Luke went both ways. Any other ideas? Which would weigh the most? All of the grass in that area, or all of the gazelles living in that area, or all the lions living like, there? Yeah, weight. Well, I don't know. No, I'd say the. I'd say the this grass. Oh, all of grass. that grass in that wide area would weigh a lot more. How many lions are going to be there? Well, I'll probably Do they live in like big numbers? I caught a pride. Oh, there's a couple. There's a few of them. What about gazelle? Uh, they Are they deer. more or less than the lion? I think they're more. 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 They're like deer. Oh. You know, like the things that she just run So out. in ecosystems, this is what we usually find. You know, maybe it would make if what if we think about the the um let's think about our little forest we were talking about earlier. We have the um oak trees that are there. That make the acorns. We have the squirrels that we said eat the acorns. And let's say we have um, a hawk in there that eats the squirrel. All right. Think about the same thing. Which would you find the most of? Oak trees, squirrels, or hawks? If you by mass. Oh, the hawks. Oak yeah. trees. Yeah. Definitely oak trees. What would be second? No, I was Savannah. You said there's like 25 squirrels out there. Hawks. Because the hawks. There's only one hawk out there. Probably the squirrels would be the next. And the top carnivore, the hawk, would be the fewest, or the least amount. And this is what we typically find. In ecosystems, the most of the mass and energy is in the producers. And as you go up from one trophic level to the next, because 90% of the energy is actually lost, only 10% can make it the next level. And then again, only 10% can make it the next level after that. And so as we move up in the food chain, up trophic levels, there's fewer and fewer of each organism. That's strange. And that should make sense. Like you think about think about the top carnivores you think of. A lion. Or us. Um, a grizzly bear. A um, shark. A great white shark. An alligator. alligator. An alligator. There's not like lot. They don't live in large groups. There's not like a, a school of sharks that swims around in the ocean. There's not dozens and dozens of lions or grizzly bears together. They're pretty rare. And that's because they are the things at the top of the food chain. And it takes a lot of energy to support them. And so we end up, if we try, so the least amount of mass, the least amount of energy is always in those top carnivores. And here, to show that, we often will use these diagrams. These are called energy pyramids. And they show how much energy is there in this ecosystem at each level. And so you see the flowers. You see these plants. Always on the bottom of these pyramids are the producers. Okay. And then the first consumers. And then the second consumers, and so forth. We get less and less energy as we move forward. So, what are we? Where are we in this? Well, I would say maybe the middle somewhere. Where am I in this? Well, you're, well, you're not. You're not as. Sweet. Which level would I be? Well, you're not near the, the top. Top. You're not near like the, the near the top. The fish. The trout. Nope. The middle. The middle. You're humans. Right? Would I be here? No. I'm not a producer. You're not underdeveloped. Oh. I would be this level, right? Because I don't eat animals. Eat. Oh. So I eat plants directly for the most part. Where would some of you that eat 
Um, what are if you eat cows? If you eat beef, where would you be? What level? Well, I'd be more up there. You'd be this third level. Yeah. Because cows eat grass, and grass is the, you eat cows. Cows eat grass. Grass is the producer. So you'd be like the third level. And this is why, um, if you had a, a set amount of space. And you wanted to feed as many people as you could on that space. What should you do? Should you buy some grain in a cow? Well, no, and then no, no. eat the cow? Well, no, if you eat the cow, then you don't have a cow. You need like, more cows so they can reproduce and make okay. more cows. What's the difference between cows what, and what's gonna, What is going to feed the most people? A grain, because you can make, when you eat the grain, you plant it again, you make more grain. If you have an acre of grain, Eating that directly is going to support more individuals than feeding the grain to a cow and eating the cow. Because again, every step we go up a food chain, we're losing what percent of the energy? Nine. 90 or so percent. Only 10% of the energy can make it into the next level. And that's why these numbers decrease by an order of 10 every step up the food chain we go. These are called energy pyramids. And that's, they show us this relationship between energy and the food chain.